really appreciative of that, as we were appreciative of you having come and spent time with us today. We look forward to you keeping in touch with us because you're part of the family now, and we'd like to know what's going on, have you keep in touch with us, and we look forward to talking with you again. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Tika, and here is the brand new release by 2022. go. His name is Tom Tika, T-I-K-K-A. That's by 2022 world premiere of A Love Letter to a Year. Hey, a little poetry off the top there, too. You never know what's going to happen on the David Bowers Awards. Right now, I'll tell you what's going to happen. We're going to get to some old friends of ours who are back for, who knows, I don't know, seventh, eighth time, however many times. We always love to have Wild Horse on the show. We're going to be talking to the boys right after we listen to their hot new track called Pray 89.
go. It's called Prig 89, the band from England, Wild Horse, here with us now. Jack and Henry, come on in and say hello, boys. Hey. Hi there. Hello. Hey. Great to have you guys back on the show here again, and some great music. I've been, I, I, I'm really hung up on the fact that you guys have really been stretching your legs and really reaching out with a whole bunch of new sounds. I mean, there's Literally no repetition in the tracks you've been pumping out the last couple of years. Now, Jack, you have been quoted as saying that Pray 89 is a song about the freedom of living a life where self-love is prioritized. Tell us what you mean by that. A song that's going to be on our album, which is coming out this Thursday, called When the Pool is Occupied. And, yeah, Pray 89, we felt, really was kind of a title track to the album. I mean... For a start, it's got the album title and the lyrics. But second of all, it's just about, you know, loving yourself, uh, prioritizing your own mental health and just how wonderful life can be once you do that. Um, I think, and that's basically what our new album is about as well. I mean, when we were writing it, we started at a time where things weren't great. You know, we started during COVID. Uh, We couldn't play live. It was not the best. And then as... We, you know, as COVID went away and we were able to do gigs again and, you know, stuff like that, this song's got progressively more and more sort of upbeat and and happy. And uh, that's because we were more happy um, towards the end of writing it. So, yeah, that song and uh, the album in general is really just about, it, it's about a process of finding yourself. And, yeah, we're very proud of it. Well, I am real proud of what you guys have been doing. And we've been getting some some good reports from over on your side of the pond, I know Mary at Breck on Eye Reviews is really high on you guys. John Bon Jovial, you're sitting there entirely too quiet. I know you want to get in here and talk with the boys, so do it. Oh, no, I was just busy, you know, contemplating my navel, and that was about it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, hey. I hope we didn't wake you up. <laughs> hey, he's loving himself. Well, it, 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 it's, it, it's been a long day. I'll put it to you that way. Jack, Henry, <laughs> hey, guys, great to have you back with us again. It's been, how long has it been? About a year? A year and a half or something so like that. Uh, quick. About a year, yeah, I think. You know. had you guys back on. 
And I, I tell you what, Cray 89, I, I really like the tune. It's the first time I've heard it. And I know that we've told you this in the past, but by design, I don't get to hear the music beforehand uh, so we can get a, you know, a good, honest, you know, knee-jerk reaction. And I really like this because there's just uh, – and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a really nice, subtle – reggae influence to this and musically i think it really really makes it oh yeah definitely yeah it's um throughout the whole of our new album there's loads of reggae influences um yeah we we love reggae and all sorts of other genres uh but yeah definitely there's a big reggae influence in that song and it really you know it stands out now i know in the past you've uh incorporated the reggae influence into your music but you know, to me, this is done in such a way where not only are you, you know, doing the Marley thing, but also you're just incorporating some very nice rock and roll riffs in there and combining the two, which you would think would be an easy thing for a musician to do. But I, I think in reality, it's not. I think to do it successfully and not a mediocre way, uh, you got to be pretty good at what you do. And you know, we've watched you guys grow over the years and just, you know, the, the progression of your music, the maturation of the sound, uh, you're, you know, it's, it's, it's really great. When David told me that you were going to be on the show, I was very excited about that because we've always enjoyed talking to you guys. Yeah, same here, uh, John. It's an absolute pleasure to be back on this show. We always enjoy chatting to you guys over there. Um, we, yeah, I've got to be honest from, from where I'm sitting. Um, we've, we've really, um, Taken this this album to a new to a new level, really. Like in terms of the writing and, and what we're now doing, it, it's uh, it's really exciting for us. And it's it's been as, as my brother said, it's been tough over the last two years now. But we, you know, we're so excited to to get this out into the open, and we just can't wait for for everyone to um, to enjoy it and consume it. And uh, hopefully, we'll be coming over your way soon and doing doing a doing a proper tour. Well, that would be awesome. That you, uh, would be that'd be wonderful. Just just leave the backstage passes at will call. We'll pick them up. Definitely, definitely <laughs> would like to be there when that happens. <laughs> that, of that, course, that's that's cool. <laughs> and you know, we're talking about about your maturation, the way you have matured musically over the time that we've known you, which is I don't know, uh, now four or five years or however long it's been. And you have, I know, yeah. most of the artists that have kept in touch with us and that we have followed, uh, we can see the trending and the, the way they mature and move on. But in your case specifically, it is really noticeable from one album to another. The fact that, uh, as I mentioned before at the top of this discussion, the fact that you have very little repetition, you're always stretching out reaching in a little bit different direction, if not a totally different genre uh, within the rock genre. Uh, you're reaching out, trying new stuff and growing as you do it. I was listening to the instrumentation in, uh, in Prey, and I, I love it, the, the instrumental work, the way you mesh the instruments together. Uh, Tom, who was on before us, Tom Tika from Finland, uh, had mentioned that in his last track, uh, a bass riff that was in there, which I really love. And anybody that knows me knows that I love a good bass guitar when it's, when it's played right and worked into the music and that your bass just works right into the music. It's not just your, you know, the, the simple thump, thump, thump type of thing. It, it, it's a working bass. And I, I really like that. Thanks very much. Mike. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. 